Well, welcome to Unit 2. In Unit 2, we're going to talk about uh, limits of size, Rule 1. And this is a list of the uh, topics that are in this unit. You'll find those in your book. And uh, this is what's coming up next here. 498 to 502. If it's 498 to 502, in the ASME Y145.1 standard, uh, 1994, it clarifies it even more. It shows an example similar to this. And first of all, we want to make sure that it can never exceed 502. So if it can't exceed 502, this here is a mating envelope. Remember, we talked about the mating envelope that you're going to go all the way across. It must fit in there. It can never get uh, exceed that boundary. And then any cross-sectional check that we cross through here, but this here is what we call local size. And according to the American standard, uh, the mathematical standard, it says that in theory what you're supposed to do is take a sphere and you drag it through the material and no part of the sphere can exit the material. Now you might say, well, how the heck am I going to do that? How am I going to check that? But this standard is not really telling you how to check parts, remember? What it's really doing is defining the mathematics behind it, what it's supposed to look like. So if we take a look again here at this slide, we see that in order to make sure that this part is good, it, it, really there's two sizes that we have to watch for. What we call is the local size. That's this one here at the sphere. That might be 498. And then the mating envelope might be 502. That would be the, uh, the mating envelope is 502. And then the local size is 498. Take a look at uh, Scott's model here. This is a... Uh, a uh, piece of dowel rod that we ordered from somebody, and we said that we wanted it to be uh, someplace between 498 to 502, and this is what we got. So how are we going to check to make sure this is good? We have to make sure the size is good. Now, obviously, this is greatly exaggerated, so you can see all the little lumps and bumps in this thing, but how are we supposed to measure a part when it looks like this? Well, you remember what it was. There's actually two checks. You're supposed to check a local size and a mating envelope. So what we do then is we'll use our calipers, and with our calipers, we can check to see if the local sizes are the right size. Now the local sizes, you know, that's not making sure this thing could be bent like a banana or like a macaroni even. How do we know that it's not bent? Well then what we have is we have a mating envelope, and this mating envelope can be simulated by this, a go gauge. And now we take the part and we can put it in here as in inside the go gauge, and it has to fit inside of this go gauge. And what size would that hole be then? Well, that would be 502, right? That's the largest that that pin could ever get. And then when we check it with our calipers, what's the smallest that this could ever be? Well, that would be what we would call local size then, right? And that's 498. Now, sometimes fitting it in these uh, at go gauge, you don't need a go gauge. Another way you could do it is you could also put it on the table and you could roll it. And then with a the height gauge, you could see how high it was. That's another way that they check the mating envelope. But easy way to explain it is just put it into your go gauge. All right, so taking a look at our slide over here, you notice that when we take this two-point measurement check, what you have to be careful about is, is there is some associated risk with this. You see, be, being able to just measure it with a micrometer, because you can, well, obviously, just take a look at it. The part could be bent. It could be bigger than what the 502 limit is. There's some other problems that we have also when you're measuring parts, especially when you have lobed parts. And the lobing occurs sometimes when you have... Uh, centerless ground parts, they have lobes on them. 